Hey everyone, welcome to this video where I'll be talking through my process for mixing drums. In this video, I'll be going through a session that I recorded at my home. Now, some of the tips I'll be giving are directly towards those who are recording at home. However, if you've had the pleasure of recording in a professional studio, you can still apply these tips to your mixing. Now, I am going to be using a lot of Slate digital plugins when I do this mix. However, you could take the concepts and apply them to really any plugin as they really are going to be concepts that I'm sharing. You will be able to download the session and the settings if you would like to use it with your existing Slate plugins. However, you can still use these with any plugins. Without further ado, let's dive into the mixing. All right, guys. So our next part of the drum set, we're going to talk about snare drums. So on my snare drum, I have three microphones. I have the Earthworks DM20, I have a Shure SM57, and then I have a SC Electronics SC7. It's a small diaphragm condenser mic that's on my bottom snare. Let's take a listen to the snare drum. Take a listen to the tonal differences between each snare. So overall, we got a really good tone from our snare drum. The DM20 is a bit more open sounding. The 57, a bit more muffled sounding. However, it seems like it has a bit less of the hi-hat bleed. Of course, the bottom snare mic is basically just getting the slap of those bottom snares. So let's take a listen to how we can make them all work together. So here we go with the DM20. So at first you're like, Calvin, you're missing like all of your ghost notes. Well, that's why we have multiple snare drum mics. Because what I do is I use my DM20 as the microphone to kind of capture the attack and the bite of the snare. I use my bottom snare mic to really kind of fill in those ghost notes and also get that from my overheads as well. So I usually will gate my top snare mic just a little tighter because I do have a bottom snare mic to compensate for it. So let's take a listen to each thing that I did with the top snare mic on the DM20. So using the slate gate again, um, I have a little bit of a tighter range and still a slow release time. And I'm still using that deep bleed feature. So on my snare, I'm using a slow attack with my distressor plug-in and then a medium release. Um, I'm also compressing it to about the 3 to 4 dB range again, um, but this time I'm using a 4 to 1 ratio. Now, I didn't engage any of the high-pass filtering here because I wanted to kind of compress the snare evenly across the board. You can engage this button right here, which will give like a mid boost to the detector, and it'll compress the mid frequencies a little more. I didn't necessarily feel that was a good sound for this particular song. I have tried it in the past, and I generally do not use it. The next thing I used on the snare is this lift. This is basically a shelf EQ that goes either on your high end or your low end. Um, big is going to be more towards your sub frequencies. Punchy is going to be your low mids. Present is kind of like your snappy, like 1K to 2K range, and silky is kind of your top end. Let's take a listen to what it does on the snare now. So overall, it thickened the snare just a tad, and it added a little bit of that breath and that snapping 
on the bottom snares it back into the microphone. Now let's take a look at what I did EQ wise. So again, that 400 range with that boxiness, I took it out. And then I added some of my top end. Now, when you get to about the 12 to 15 range, that's gonna be more like your sizzle type of EQ. Um, when you get to your one to three K, that's gonna kind of be like your bark and your bite. Now that you wanna be really careful with because depending on how much bleed and how well you clean out that snare drum with your gate, it could become a really harsh sound when snares, I mean not snares, cymbals or hi-hats come involved through that gate. So you wanna be careful there. Of course, this is genre dependent. So if you're doing something that's more rock driven, you might want more of that. So let's take a listen to what it sounds like with what I have and then I'll move some of the knobs so you can hear what they do. So as you heard, once I dialed in the, the snares and I had, well, sorry, as you heard, once I dialed it in um, and I turned up like those upper mids, it got a little harsh. So you don't want to be too aggressive with that. The top end, that 15K, not too bad, um, but you did hear that boxiness come in. Let's take a listen to the 57. So on the 57, took the same approach I did on the DM20, except you'll notice over here on my EQ, I'm not as heavy handed with it. Just a little minor boost at the top, but I did scoop out some of that boxiness. So just adds a little bit of snap. And now what you're hearing is that the DM20 is a bit brighter, the 57 a bit darker, which is together going to make a very fat and articulate sounding snare. Let's listen to them together. So as you hear right there, we have a really beefy sound and a bright articulate sound. Now let's put it all together with our bottom snare mic. So on our bottom snare mic, I did a little thing, I did something a little different. I used a faster attack. And that's because I want my bottom snare mic to be very even. I don't want the attack to necessarily jump out more than those ghost notes. So I'm using a faster attack to kind of catch that transient very quickly and squash it so that way it doesn't necessarily jump out at us on a passage like this where there are a load of ghost notes. Um, with our EQ, you'll see I added a ton of low end. Um, this is just adding more weight and fatness to that snare. Um, scooped out the lower mids again. And then I scooped out a bit at the 5K range just because those snares got a little too snappy. And then we added a boost at 10K. So let's take a listen to it with the EQ on and the EQ off. So as you hear that low end really kind of helps to bring it to life. Whereas before it was a little flat. So um, now let's listen to all three snares together. Cleaning up. All right, now let's jump to our next section. 